Another animation that you saw occurring on this slide was the use of flashing arrows to indicate a sequence. In this case, it is the sequence of converting one document into a flash paper document. Let's go through the steps of setting up arrows to indicate this kind of sequence. I'm going to fast forward through the process of drawing these text boxes, aligning them, and then putting a fill and text inside of them, since these are basic steps that we've already covered earlier in the series. Once you have your text boxes set up, click on Shapes and get the arrows you need to indicate the kind of process that you wish to show. In our case, we're going to use the bent arrow at the beginning and end of the process, and then right pointing arrowheads in between. When it comes to creating multiple copies of an object, be sure that you clone it by copying the same object over and over again so that there is consistency in the size and shape. You'll also notice that the green dot or tool on each object is also the one that you select in order to rotate that object. You can rotate an object by 15 degrees only by holding down the shift key. Once the objects are in place and you're ready to begin animation, select the object, go to add effect, and the first way we're going to do this is with change fill. Change fill changes the color inside the object. So we're going to go from a dark green to a lighter green. We also need to change the timing to very fast so that it looks like a flash. And we also need to select auto reverse so that it goes back to its original color. Let's do that a couple more times. Add effect, emphasis, change fill, change the color to our green, change speed to very fast, and change timing to after previous, which gives us our sequence. And then under Effect Options, be sure to check Auto Reverse. And as you can see, we are beginning to put these arrows flashing in sequence. So now all that remains once we're satisfied with this technique is to continue the process of adding the change fill, the correct color, the correct timing, and the effect option of starting after previous, and the effect option of auto reverse. And once we have all of our arrows properly animated, we are now ready to test the sequence to make sure color change, timing, and auto reverse are in effect. Okay, our sequence is looking good. All of the arrows are flashing in sequence with the proper color change and speed. Now that the basic sequence is established, it's possible to insert that sequence wherever you want during the slide, or also to repeat that sequence as many times as you wish during the slide. For example, we can move our text boxes down below the sequence, let the sequence of arrows flash first, then bring in our text boxes, and then copy and paste our sequence once again below the text boxes, having that sequence seem to be in continual loop. Notice that in this demonstration, there is first a flash sequence, text appears, and then there's another flash sequence, and then more text appears, and it seems like the flash sequence is in continuous loop. Let's explore another way of indicating sequence using arrows and PowerPoint, and that is with the entrance and then wipe function. The default is wipe from the bottom. Let's change it to wipe from the left. And as you see, as we change each of these arrows to wipe from left very fast, we will also be able to indicate a sequence or part of a process by having the arrows wipe sequentially from the left at the same speed and then once we go back and change activation to after previous 
the arrows will flash in a sequence by themselves in perfect timing. And as you can see, this is a very different way of indicating a sequence. A little bit more dynamic because it has more motion to it. Now let's explore a third way of indicating process and sequence by combining these techniques that we have learned so far. Under Shapes, let's select the U-turn arrow and then draw a large U-turn arrow that we're going to insert into the middle of the two tent boxes or text boxes. Let's delete the arrowhead by moving the yellow sizing tool and let's position the tube there directly in the middle and then moving the right side only by using that movement or shape tool. Next under format we're going to have a no fill tube here and our outline is going to be the same color as our two boxes. Now we go up to the format tab and click on send to back and as you see this places the bottom portion of the tube behind the two boxes making it seem as if the tube flows from one box to the next. Next we're going to clone our tube and then after we've cloned it we're going to add a wipe to it. Entrance, wipe, and wipe from left. We're also going to change the speed from very fast to medium. Next we're going to go to Format, Shape Fill, and select our green fill. Now as you can see it looks like the green fill as it did before is filling from the left to the right. Now our next step is to go back up to the Send to Back tool, but this time we're going to select only Send Backward, placing the green tube in front of the white tube, but still behind the two boxes. Next, because this is a clone, we can line it up exactly with the white tube behind it. And then once we go to play this, you'll see that it looks like the white tube is filling up. In actuality, it is the second green tube, which you do not see because it is a clone, that is actually filling up due to the wipe left animation. Now with these several different kinds of sequence animations, it's possible to combine them in any number of ways to show a complex process. For example, let's say in this flash paper demonstration, I wanted to more clearly illustrate visually for my viewers the process of turning a Word document symbolized by the box with a W into a flash paper document symbolized by the next box. And here you can see all of these different animations that we've practiced being combined. In conclusion, as you see, it's possible to take some very basic animation techniques in PowerPoint and combine them to achieve a really creative effect. And most importantly, an effect that helps your viewers better visualize and understand your important message.